every ham's worst nightmare. Noise. Well, maybe HOAs, but noise is the issue I have at my station. This particular noise is from a light dimmer in a neighbor's house, and it's bad enough that it essentially wipes out everything from about 12 megahertz and down. This noise is often 10 dB over S9, making it so that I can really only hear the strongest of signals. So obviously you have to do something about it. And when diplomacy didn't work out, and since my wife is insistent that felonious arson is off the table, I knew I had to get creative. But noise must be a huge problem for everyone out there, right? Used to work a lot of 160 meters when I lived over on the coast near Seattle. Had a full-size inverted V at 115 feet out in the country and no noise. I didn't even uh, need a beverage or anything like that. And I could open and close the band. It was just uh, it was just a real uh, pleasure to be on. Low noise receive antennas with an RDF factor, front to back ratio, are not very difficult to build, or at least that's what the internet wanted me to believe. After ruling out a beverage antenna due to the lack of real estate on my city lot, I started researching the K9AY loop, specifically a pair of perpendicular loops. I was attracted to the null they offered as the bulk of the noise I was having a problem with was coming from one specific direction. If I could just park that noise in a null, that should bring the noise down many dB, right? Okay, I was sold. I found a few designs and started putting it together in my favorite EDA software. It did not take long before I had a schematic I could use to create my layout. Overall, it's very simple. One DPDT relay controls whether you're on loop A or loop B, and the second dual pole dual throw relay allows you to flip flop front and back. The front and back are chosen by flipping which side is fed to the matching transformer versus which side is terminated through a terminating resistor. You can even make it switchable so that a few different carbon composition resistors could be switched in and out in parallel to adjust the impedance value of the terminating resistor. This allows you to control the null pattern's takeoff angle somewhat, but it's also helpful as the loop's characteristic impedance does differ between bands. A single fixed value of termination resistor is not a deal breaker. The matching transformer is a design I grabbed from a previous project, the KK5JY loop on ground antenna. I wound another one just like it and put it into this project. We'll revisit my log antenna a little later on. Before I could put something like this up, I needed to have a way to control all the relay logic from the comfort of my shack. I had been working on a project to control my station remotely and had already built an ESP32 based antenna controller that I called the antenna matrix controller. This unit deserves its own video, but I used the same hardware and software platform to control this new K9AY loop. The web interface lets me choose the direction I want the antenna to favor, while a slider lets me fine adjust the terminating resistor as mentioned before. I added an enable button to the mix so that I could short the antenna to ground when not in use or when transmitting. Just like every other terminated loop, it's got very, very low outputs, and I wanted to be able to have a preamplifier at the base of the antenna, so I needed a means to prevent sending a preamplifier into low Earth orbit. The enable relay is actually switched by keying the radio as my controller senses the key line from my rig. Now for the construction of this thing. I wanted everything to be somewhat weather stable, so I went with an electrical enclosure from the hardware store. I mounted it to the pole using custom 3D printed horseshoe style mounts I designed in FreeCAD. The guy rings and the separator at the top of the pole were also made in FreeCAD and 3D printed. I was new to 3D prototyping, but with a good set of calipers and a little patience, I was actually quite amazed at just how easy it is to make custom parts. These poles are military poles that stack somewhat like Lego. They're dimensionally stable fiberglass, so they make an ideal platform for antenna projects that need to be put up in random order and by just one person. These guy rings are designed for a three or four rope system with a set of holes at each of the 90 degree points around them, as well as 120 degree points. These guy rings serve as anchors at the midpoint, as well as as a way to guide the wire into the box at the bottom. Don't worry, I trimmed and cleaned up the wire after taking these photos. Some white pickets from an old rope fence serve as ground anchors, and this is where 
both the loops and the guy ropes are secured. In order to complete the circuit for the loops, a ground rod is pounded into the earth here. This particular rod is just five feet of a 10 foot rod as this antenna doesn't really need much more than that. And that's what I had on hand. The antenna uses this dedicated earth ground and not the station ground. These relays are using station ground for switching and the coaxial cable is also part of the whole station ground. Since the transformer we talked about before is DC isolating, these two are completely separate grounds. My design did allow for these to be shorted together if that provides better noise isolation, but in my case, I haven't needed to test that yet. So far, I'm pretty happy with the results. Here's a quick video of me playing around with the antenna in the broadcast band one evening right before sunset. Is the website comedycashcow.com, and if you're a comedian and you are interested in competing, that's where you can go to submit your short tape. Now you're looking for about three to five minutes in a short bio, so they do kind of an introduction, and and the three to five minutes, and then from there they will be selected by your panel, and they will be the ones who actually perform on May 25th. Yes, yeah, the so selected uh, uh, comedians there's there'll be 25, and and currently we have that um, the 25 will go forward and that's where they'll be on stage to perform their uh, three minutes to wow the judges. And from there, we'll take our top five and uh, and that's where you'll come in, Dawn, to, uh, to help us make those decisions on picking the first annual uh, Comedy Cash Cow. Yeah, that's gonna be amazing. And, and then uh, your volunteers are all filled out for the event or could you use some, of, some more volunteers to help? volunteers. Uh, we, we're creating these programs in the community, so we want partnership, we want, you know, sponsorship, if, if, if local business is non-negotiable. It's a 96 calorie. for one night, but I don't think that that's something that Adam Silver is licking his jocks about. No, it's, it's not, but you all can get what you get. Yeah, it is a game. You gotta step up. You know, you can sort of direct that even in zero gravity, right, it, it's coming out of you pressurized. So that kind of makes sense, but I don't get the the number two part, right? Like, it's not nearly as pressurized. pressurized. Well, if they're eating Mexican, maybe they can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Taco Bell. Uh, they get lots of, lots of lots of hermetically sealed Taco Bell. <laughs> Extra brain, dehydrated uh, chalupas. Pooping in a bag. Is oh. the uh, what? This insider has to say about this. Oh, the old PIB method. I see. <laughs> PIB. Uh, all right. Well, is that um, business insider or doing your business insider? <laughs> taking care of business. Taking insider. care of business. <laughs> and nobody's business insider. <laughs> you guys are too much fun. Uh. Start your morning out right every weekday with Mike Hammer, playing the best hits from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. The most news and information. NBC, plus, of course, all the local news you'll ever need with John Owen, Dave Anderson, and the KOFI News Team. There's plenty of fun trivia. Often really the You're listening to In This Economy, wherever you get your podcasts.
Running a business comes with lots of questions. How do I hire talented workers? How can I develop my team's skills? How do I retain my staff? With WorkBC, you'll find the support and services to help answer these questions and more. Whether you're starting a new business or hoping to grow an existing one, WorkBC has the tools and resources to help you take the next step. Learn more at workbc.ca slash find answers. A message from the government of British Columbia. Delari is Canada's largest automotive group. But what does that mean? That means over 75 dealerships across Canada and 23 right here in the Lower Mainland. That thousand new, pre-owned, and demo vehicles available for immediate delivery. With such an abundance of selection, it's safe to say there's something for everyone. Find your perfect... Mr. Man, everyone that was able, hate the light. Hate Christ, who is the light. And it's like, it's really interesting because when I was a kid, my struggle was that I didn't know enough. You know, and I, and I think that was out of a gent, like people were trying to spare me. Taylor now. 800-296-1251. 800-296-1251. That's 800-296-1251. Offer required credit qualification, 24 months of minimum, early termination fee, and e-auto pay. A lot of you heard about Thanks for watching. In a future video, I'll go into depth into this antenna matrix controller and kind of show you how I built everything, how it works, and what I use it for. I'll also talk about how I've had to add additional switching capability since I originally created it. Go ahead and subscribe. Thanks.